Hey guys, have you heard that Python is the most popular programming language in the US? It even left Java behind. Python sure is one of the easiest languages to learn. In most Linux distros, you already have both Python 2 and Python 3 pre-installed. You can check it in the terminal. Here is the second version. We have version number 2.7.13. By the way, the official support for Python 2 is going to be dropped in a couple of years. Here is the third version, so it's 3.5.3. .3. Let's find out what's the latest version. We should visit the official website python.org. The latest version is actually 3.6.4. So if you want the fancy shiny new one with the latest cool features, you need to build it from source. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're not going to hit this button. Let's download Python the secure way. So click on view the full list of downloads and go to the end of the page. What we're interested in is the open PGP public keys of Python release managers. We don't want to get hacked, so we need that information to check the file we're about to download for authenticity. That means we need to make sure that it wasn't modified by somebody willing to install malware on our computer. Find the name Ned Daily. He's going to be the release manager for all Python 3.6 and Python 3.7 releases. We're going to see his name later again. Then let's go back to the beginning of the page and click on Python 3.6.4. That's the source code file that we want. Again, we need to go to the bottom of the page and click on XZ Compressed Source Tarball. Save it onto the desktop. Then, on the same line at the end of it, find the link SIG. That's the PGP signature that the release manager created for us to check the file. Let's also download it and save it onto the desktop. In order to import the public key of the Python release manager to our keychain, first we need to install GPG library that will allow us to connect to the server that stores public keys. Let's do that with this command. You'll need administrative rights for that. Use sudo or su command. All the commands that I mentioned in this video you can find in the description below. Next, let's import the key from the server. This is the ID of NetDaily's public key. What we're telling our computer to do is to download the public key associated with this ID. Next time you download a new Python version, you won't have to do this step. The key will be in your system. We should change the directory to the desktop. Then let's verify that the source code that we downloaded is authentic by running this command. Search for words good signature from Ned Daily. If it's there, that means that it's the same source code file that was created by the Python release manager and it wasn't modified by somebody else afterwards. Great, now we can proceed. Let's copy our source code file to the system directory where it can be safely handled by root. Go to that directory and unpack the contents of the file by running this command. Ok, we set almost everything for the installation to begin. We just need to install additional libraries necessary for the compilation. Let's do that with those commands. Type letter Y to confirm, then press enter. Looks like we're ready for building Python from source code. Let's go to the directory that was automatically created when we were unpacking the source code file. We need to configure the compilation running this command. Ok, here is the runway, we're about to take off. At this point, you need to decide if either you want to replace the current Python 3 version with the new one, or install the new one alongside the old one. I strongly do not recommend replacing because that can corrupt your system. So I warned you, if you know exactly what you're doing, then use this install option. But I'm going to use the safe alt install, which will install this version alongside the old one. This process can take a very long time. The installation has been finished. Python is famous for its vast standard library. 
but if you ever need to download an additional module, it's very simple to do. Let's download a very popular module called Requests. Note that I specifically typed Python 3.6 to avoid using the old Python 3.5 version that is still on my computer. By the way, make sure you know the exact name for the module that you want and type it without any errors. If you make a typo, you will download an absolutely different module and PyPI package system is not monitored for a malicious code. The creator of requests module, Kenneth Wrights, confessed in his blog that he was the subject of a targeted cyber attack. Someone wanted to gain access to his GitHub account but was unsuccessful because a two-factor authentication was enabled. Requests is one of the most downloaded Python packages of all time, pulling in over 11 million downloads every month. Imagine how many computers would be infected if somebody replaced the code with a malicious one. That tells you that you really should be careful downloading and installing anything from third-party websites. Okay, enough of scary things. Let's see if we can open new Python. If we type Python 3, we open the old version. But if we type Python 3.6, yay! Let's check if everything works correctly and create a simple timer program. So we are importing time module, creating a for loop, setting it up to display the value every second. Don't forget that Python uses four spaces as a default indentation. I'm going to use a version 3.6 specific feature that would work only in the new version. For example, the F string. The last step with the F string is to display the result. Let's execute it. Lovely. You can quit by pressing Ctrl and D. Don't forget to change the path to Python 3.6 in your favorite IDE so it would use the newest version by default. I hope you'll get all the benefits of the new version of Python. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. See you later!